Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This question is a typical IIT JE question. It involves more than one concept at the same time and it's not so straightforward question as well. But it's pretty likely that IIT JE may ask questions around this. Okay, that's why I'm going to cover this question. So let's read through the question. A raindrop is falling through a cloud which consists of tiny water droplets suspended in the air. Assume that the raindrop is spherical all times and is initially of negligible size and that when it hits the water droplet, the droplet's water gets added to it. So what's the acceleration of the raindrop? So pretty interesting question. And uh, if you think this is also a pretty realistic question. Okay, so what's happening is that there is a raindrop like this. Okay. Assume that it's a pretty big raindrop and it's falling through the cloud and the cloud has tiny water droplets, tiny droplets here, okay, like that. And it's falling through. And as it hits those droplets, they simply get added to the raindrop. So the raindrop size is consistently increasing. Okay. And therefore, we need to figure out the acceleration of the raindrop. That's it. Nothing else is given. Okay. So how do you approach such question? As I have recommended earlier, draw some picture. So we have some picture here. So what's happening is if you see, as the raindrop is falling, the if this is the cross section of the raindrop, then that's what area which is perpendicular or normal to the raindrop, which is hitting these droplets, effective area. And the droplets which are effectively hitting this area, this worth of area, it's collecting the volume of droplets. So in any delta T period of time, let's say, if the raindrop moves little bit down, let's say, like this, okay, in delta T period, then we can say that this much worth of volume has been added, okay. And this distance, let's say delta y, is what the raindrop has covered in delta t time period. So if delta y is small enough, then we can write delta y as v delta t, right? If v is the velocity of the raindrop, right? So this much we can conclude. If delta y is tends to zero, very, very less. Okay, so this much distance the drop has covered in the downward direction and it has collected that much of droplets. So, so delta V, if, if we write volume of droplets collected by the raindrop in delta T seconds, okay, when the velocity of the drop is let's say small v okay so what is the cross section area if let's say we assume that the radius at that time is r so cross section area is nothing but pi r square and the delta y is the distance that it covers right so delta y, so this much volume of the droplets is collected and that's the volume of this disk if you see pi r square into delta y. So we can write pi r square v delta t and since delta t is so small we can take velocity as constant for that delta t and so mass delta mass collected would be delta v into density. Let's say rho is the density of the droplets. So delta m will be pi r square v rho delta t. 
which is delta m by delta t is pi r square rho v right v is velocity so this is the equation for let's say we call it m dot the rate of change of mass with respect to time right so this question also explains that how we manipulate simple things in order to solve the question there are certain things which are given and we start manipulating those things so other things that you know the mass of the raindrop is volume times the density and volume is 4 by 3 pi r cube rho so let's call this m dm by dt if we differentiate this function with respect to time we also get m dot let's call this as function 1 and this m dot is then 4 pi r square and dr by dt right because r is also changing therefore let's write this equation as 4 pi r square r dot rho right this is another expression for change of mass with respect to time 1 and 2 and what we get is 4 pi r square r dot rho equal to pi r square rho v we can take the velocity as 4 r dot so this is the velocity of the rain drop at any given time right okay so let's call this function 3 or equation 3 now how do we proceed further we have got some equation but effectively what we need is the acceleration so we will use f equal to dp by dt rate of change of momentum which is d m v by dt right now here the mass is changing and the velocity is changing so this will become v dm by dt plus m dv by dt we can also write v m dot plus m v dot you know this notification right this uh, m dot means dm by dt or v dot means dv by dt okay now what is f the downward force is nothing but mg so we can write mv dot plus m dot v equal to mg so this is the equation of motion right equation of motion let's call this equation 4 now all we need to do is substitute the v dot and uh, m dot from here if you see is this m dot we can also write here as 3 m by r r dot if we take m as 4 by 3 pi r cube rho and we replace the 4 pi r square with 3 m by rho so we'll get this right so this is also there so we can use this equation for m dot and for v dot we can simply use since v is 4 r that implies v dot is 4 r double dot r double dot is nothing but d2r by dt square right okay so this becomes 4 m r double dot plus v what is v v is 4 r dot and what is m dot m dot is 3 m by r r dot so 3 m by r r dot and equal to mg so m will cancel out everywhere and therefore what we have is 4 r double dot r plus 12 r dot square equal to gr 
लिखे एंड दैट्स द फाइनल इक्वेशन राइट now this equation is in terms of r which is the radius of the rain drop so it is following this equation now if you see this equation there is nothing here except g g is the only extra parameter here rest everything is in terms of r now from symmetry if you see the dimension of all of these should match right and r is a function of t so we can take r t as a and g is constant so we can take g and t is square why are we doing this because we know that r is a function of t and the dimension everywhere is same so r if r has a t to the power n then r dot square should have the same power and same with this now this function satisfies everything right so let's plug it in so if r is this then r dot is 2 ag t and r double dot is 2 ag therefore this equation will become 2 ag and r is ag t square plus 12 2 a 2 a g t square equal to g a g t square now we have t square everywhere so we can cancel t square and then if we expand it will become 8 a square g square plus 48 a square g square and a g square right okay so this is nothing but 56 a square g square equal to a g square that is if i take a g square as common so 56 a minus 1 equal to 0 none of these are zero so this must be zero which means a is 1 by 56 right now acceleration that's what we need to find of rain drop is equal to v dot which is dv by dt right and v dot is this 4r double dot v dot is 4 R double dot, which is four two a g, because R is a g t square, right? And therefore, this is eight into one by fifty six g. Therefore, v dot is g by seven. So, if you see this, this is such a nice expression. the acceleration is independent of everything so acceleration is constant of the rain drop is constant and is independent of everything of r mass everything this is beautiful right so that's the expression for acceleration hence the answer is c this is the answer so i hope you like this video and you enjoyed solving this problem please do subscribe to the channel like the video and share the video with your friends thank you very much subscribe and gain access to concepts and tips for doing better in iit je or other examinations keep up the great work